One second. All right. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Levy. As you see, I'm dressing, I'm not in the suit today. I'm dressing a little bit more fashionably because I'm with one of the most amazing uh, models and modeling, uh, model agency owners, uh, Ms. Rowena Kay, who owns Chic Nouvelle Modeling Agency, has been ex in existence for 14 years. Uh, the agency and she has recently broken a Guinness World Book record for having the most models in one show. And uh, she was in the news, and just the fact that you're a Guinness World uh, Record breaker is just amazing. And she and I have been amazing friends for as long as I know, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. We're family friends, and so we love each other. That's my sister right there. And so uh, she is a very busy person, like a very busy person. So the fact that I'm able to get her on the camera and get her time is very important. Those of you who are watching, you're about to get a wealth of knowledge for someone who's been in the industry for years. She's gotten people in countless magazines, countless TV shows, commercials, movies, uh, major movies, major films, uh, major network uh, shows. A major runway show. She actually is one of the people over Fashion Week in New Orleans, and she also collaborates with the other Fashion Weeks around the country. She's internationally known, and we have her here. Like, wow. And so, uh, first, I'd just like to introduce to everyone, no one else besides the amazing Rowena K. How you doing, Rowena? I, I am good. Good. Glad to be taking a little break. Yes, on a Sunday. <laughs> Yes, yeah. thank you so much. And she w she actually offered to come out, but uh, the day that she was going to come out, she was going to have an entourage of models with her doing a, a photo session in a yeah. nearby city, but it was just so much that we couldn't collaborate everything together. So we're doing it through video. So uh, since I have you here, Rowena, uh, yeah. she's also an instructor. She's a person who is uh, she's very personable. Uh, usually, you know, you expect the models to be like the ones who are real snooty, but she's not like that. She trains her other models to be humble. And so yeah. uh, just to go ahead and jump into everything, let me first, uh, uh, if you want to say anything about your agency or what you've done uh, in modeling, I know I've introduced you, but if there's anything you want to say or add to it. Uh, well, we're big on philanthropy. I love the fact that um, – we love to help, and it's because of the type of parents that I have. I grew up with a mom who would take people in, and I grew up with, you know, her always saying, my mom and dad, you know, just always look out for your fellow man because, honestly, one of the things that God wants us to do while on earth is to be able to look out for other people, especially if you can, and some people feel that they don't have the means to do so. Sometimes you don't even know that just having a nice smile can go a long way and help so many people. So I try to instill that in the models that we work with. You know, don't frown upon a show that does not pay. You know, there are sometimes there are benefit shows and the models are not able to get paid for it. I said, but you don't know what type of blessing you could get out of doing something for somebody. We've had models that have received numerous blessings just for doing something for free. Just like one model who did a gig for free, you never know who's in the audience, and someone who was scouting for models for Solange, Beyonce's sister's video, they spotted her, they contacted me for her. She did not one but two videos for Solange and was the featured wow. model in both videos and ended up going to a private party afterwards uh, by Solange wow. as a thank you to her and got paid well wow. for the video, both videos, yes. Wow, wow. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the meat of it. Okay. A lot of the students who are watching, some of them are interested in, in, in getting into the modeling industry because there are a plethora of models. You don't always have to be, you know, you're, if you get a chance one day to ever meet her family, they're all tall and slender and they're all beautiful. Uh, but not everyone is tall, not everyone is slender. You know, my family, you know, we're a little bit more round. <laughs> but um, but uh, there are models for all industries. You look at the pine saw lady. You know, she has a gap, and she's plus size. But she's not your typical runway model. You have the subway, the guy who used to be the subway or the all-state guy. These are all models. 
of all sizes and, and shapes. So first, uh, uh, we got the chance to talk earlier about how to get into the mountain in industry, but could you tell us what facets of the industry are there? I heard you mention, like we were talking, you were talking about there's commercial, there's print, runway, video. Like, could you yes. kind of explain the different areas that people go into for modeling? Yes, there is definitely commercial modeling where these are models, of course, that are able to look pretty, but also you don't have to have the standard uh, look of American beauty at all times, but you can commercial, they, they do commercials and they're attached to sometimes large brands, like brands with um, Mercedes Benz or something like that. Those type of models actually bring in some serious money. You have promotional models, those models who may not be as tall as um, a runway model, but they can be a promotional model for a product, for makeup, for hair, for jewelry, and sometimes you're, you're seeing their face. You can see their hands. Sometimes models, you know, model jewelry for their neck, their hands. I just had a model to get a promotional, promotional modeling gig. She is uh, a very tall model, but this was not a requirement for this particular um, ad that she did, but what it did do was allow her to do a lot of ads that circulated online. It also allowed her to be in their catalog. It allowed oh. her to be, uh, as you go in Lakeside Mall here in New Orleans, which is one of our main malls in Metairie, Louisiana, you see the mm -hmm. huge posters of her as you walk in the mall. Like she's just big wow. all over the place. Even, um, the video advertisement, she's a part of that. Um, some of the models who worked with her have hit the major billboards around Claiborne, which is a, you know, major avenue here. Um, so some of the other models who work with her, they've hit the billboards, which means she will be probably next, because I see that they're displaying models bit by bit. And she received a nice sum of money for being wow. able to be a promotional model. You do have wow. your runway models. Runway models are models, like if I want to give an example of a female run, run, runway model, they're usually between the heights of 5'9 to 5'11. With guys, they're usually going to be between 5'9 and 6'2. Uh, runway models are a lot of times in the New York area, but those are the types of models that do have to be a specific height, and they have to have certain measurements. You have models that do fashion shows, which I love the most. And the reason is because I don't have to tell a model who's five feet six or five feet two that she or he cannot do a show. They can be included no matter what their sizes are, no matter what their heights are. So that's what I love about those models that do uh, fashion shows. Print models are the most highly paid models of them all. A model could be a print model for a makeup company, and their pay can be between 100000 to even a million or more per year. Wow, that's amazing. Now, I heard you said 6'2". Uh, for one-way models, it could be 6'2"? Uh, up to 6'2"? Yes, like five, use it for guys, no shorter than five, um, nine. They prefer them really to be about 5'10". And then a lot of times, no taller than 6'2", but there are always exceptions to the rules. When these companies see a strong look or personality that a model has, if they want them, you could be 6'3", or 6'4", or 6'5", and they will hire you. So that's just standard. Okay. That's standard. You know, I, I was asking because I'm 6'2", and, yeah. you know, but my ways might be too big, so okay. <laughs> I'm playing around. It, when, you know, the, the industry, they, they say um, it, it's a term that they use when they say there are some models that could go through the back door, which is a sort of like who you know type of thing. There are a lot of models or there are a lot of people in the entertainment industry that get a break because of someone that they know or something exceptional about them. Um, people don't even realize, I know some of my audience might be younger, but even when Tyra Banks had her show with America's Next Top Model, one of the persons who became um, 
the top model and actually won the competition one year, it was said that the cutoff height was 5'7 in order to be a part of Tara Schultz. She was actually 5 feet 6, but because she had such a unique look, Eva picked because she I remember Eva. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. I remember that. Be because of her look, like people who I deal with in the industry who actually worked on the staff, they were able to let me know that she was not 5'7". She was 5'6". But her look was so unique that they really wanted to work with her. Now, I will tell you an interesting fun fact. After the show, Eva grew 5'8". She says she doesn't know if it was because of extensive yoga, because she had been doing yoga, and yoga can sometimes stretch the body. Myself, at the age of 33, I grew an additional inch after having the third child out, and I went from 5'9 to 5'10". Your women can get, their feet to get can get bigger. Thank goodness my feet didn't get bigger. Um, <laughs> but having having a baby can make women um, their bodies can change in different ways. And for me, I grew an inch taller, and I verified it with three different doctors because I was like, I'm 33. How is it that I'm growing taller? And they were asking, you know, well, what what have you been doing? I said, well, I just had a baby, and they said that could definitely be it. It can stretch your body different ways, you know. So that's what okay. happened with me. But yeah. Okay, so yeah. I have another question. So, uh, so you mentioned there are print models, there are uh, commercial models, there are high fashion. Uh, now, I know you've dealt with a whole. I mean, you have a lot of models in your in your repertoire already. The yeah. ones who are the most successful, because even even now we, we you know we have students who are watching this. Mm -hmm. But the models that you've had that were the most successful, what do you think they did differently compared to the other models? Like how serious did they take and, or what did they do to get where they are now? It's 90% attitude, 10% what you look like in this business. And you, wow. can, you can see just from certain people who have reached another level and certain people are wondering, like, how did this person get this for your personality? will take you so far. Humbleness is the number one thing. I have had so many models that have everything that they need. They have the height. They have the look. They have the way they dress. They have everything and have some of the worst attitudes. And mm. people do not want to work with them because of that. Here's another fun fact. In New York, and I found this out from dealing with so many business partners in New York, New York a lot of times will not hire models from New York. Most of the oh. models that make it in New York are coming from the South and they're coming Ooh. from other oh. they're, they're coming <laughs> from other they're coming from other countries. Um, they said there's a, a a greenness and a humbleness about the ones that are coming from the South. They're able to mold them. Those people mm. who have the money to be able to put you in front of the brands that are really large. They want to work with those that are hungry for it. Having hunger is so important. Okay. Have not, not hungry to the point where you'll do anything for the sake of money or fame, but I'm talking about just that drive where you feel that, hey, this is where I want to be. I mean, I eat, sleep, and I, I just think about this all day and I'm willing to put my best foot forward. If you tell me that I need to be at a casting or at a booking for 5 o'clock, I'm going to get there for 4.30. Like, they look at everything like that. Some of the models that I'm working with right now, they're not the tallest of the models. They do have some good height. They're about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, it's about three college students. When I tell you every time I post on Instagram or on Facebook for any type of gig I have, those girls must have me on the notifications, however you do that. The young people know how to do that little notification thing. Mm -hmm. They are texting me. They're like, Miss Rowe, do you think that this is something that I would be good for? And if so, and I have to travel, let me know if you feel that this is something that I, I should be a part of because I really want to do it. They will carpool. They will put their money together. And yet, I have a model. She has 
everything that she needs. It's, it's a couple of them. I don't want to single anybody out. She's already financially stable because of her parents. I don't even get the same drive from her that I get from the others, but she has it. She has everything that the industry would be looking for, but she's a little more relaxed with it, whereas those other girls, they're so hungry that they're mm -hmm. about to steal everything that she could have because of her having the height, the look, the size. These three girls have the potential to just come right up underneath her and get everything because they're, they're practicing their passion. They're in the mirror. They're practicing their posing. When they mm -hmm. see me, they're like, hey, Miss Rowe, here's my walk. You know, what do I need to work on? They're, no matter how wonderful you are, no matter what stage you are, including myself, including people who are already at the top, there is always room for improvement, which is why me being a school teacher for 27 years, I'm very picky about giving a report card with all eight for the first quarter because there's always room for improvement. Now, right, if they so, knock it out the park, you know, then, of course, I'll give it to them. But, yes, it's, it's, it's your tribe, your determination, and your humbleness. That's, okay, that's so, what gets you far. So for someone, how, how do you think someone figures out that, okay, I'm supposed to be a model or I'm called, like, what do you think it is that is the, the call factor for it? Or how can someone determine if they're meant to be a model? The majority of the models who come to me have already told me, and this is pretty much the majority of them, they say one or two things. Um, they say that this is something that they have always felt from a young child, like it's something that has always been in them. A lot of them will say, hey, other people have told me that this is what I should do, so I think I want to go ahead and try it out and see if I have what it takes. But the majority of the models said that they have been, had a feeling since they were very young. When it's dealing with females, they have always been stealing their mom's lipstick and walking in the hills. Now, I am getting a different group that are coming through. Um, and these are the models that are watching what's happening on Instagram where people can do their own little photos with their iPhones and they can edit them. And then those models automatically think, oh, I already have what it takes. Those usually don't last that long in the industry. You okay, know, so. You, it, it's, a, it's something that they know. It's the ones that come and want to do it just because their friends are doing it and they want to be in the social area where you go to the after parties, you do have those that, you know, they just want to look cute and be able to take pictures for Instagram, which there's nothing wrong with that. But those are the models where if I have a booking for something, I'm like, okay, well, I, I submitted you. You're the model that's selected. Those are the type that will sometimes come and say, oh, well, you know, something came up. I won't be able to do it. When an agent hears that over and over, that is the phrase, I, I, I just swear, that is one of the phrases that is very hard for me to digest when models constantly come to me and say something came up. I'm a very open person, so they can just kind of let me know. Because when they say something came up, it just means that they don't want to do it or they don't want to be bothered or they prefer to be somewhere else at that time. Just tell them. Models, so you, can, always come, models can always come to tell me and say, hey, this is not a booking that I'm interested in. Can you please let me know about the next one? But when it's consistent, when they can't show up, that already – gives me notation to just say, okay, well, this, this model doesn't have to drop. But the models that really feel that they have the potential, and a lot of times it does not even have to be the tallest and the thinnest of the models. I have models that are so photogenic. You see them in person, and then you see their pictures, and you'll be like, oh, my God, like you put a product in their hands, and they will sell it. And then we can have the tall, thin ones, and they're just giving you a dead face. And that just means we have to work with them and practice with them, but you still have to have the drive. I cannot want it for you more than you want it for yourself. So you're saying that even as a model, you have to have, like, a certain work ethic Ooh, pretty you much. Do. You have to have 
you honestly have to have a, a worth ethic more than anybody else, and you have to be very careful because your your body, your face is, you know, that that's that's your product. So you have to be careful with your eating. You have to be careful of how you're taking care of yourself. You have to be careful of making sure you have enough sleep because it will show. Um, I would tell people all the time about the Victoria's Secret models. I used to have models that would always be like, can I be a Victoria's Secret model? Be, uh, you know, a model like that, they wouldn't understand a lot of times that make that Victoria's Secret models sometimes didn't want to be a Victoria's Secret model. Their life was hard. Um, mm -hmm. They would do liquid diets two weeks before they would get on the runway. They would not be able to, um, they had to keep a very squeaky clean image. So you couldn't be caught just hanging out with friends, drinking. Everything had to be very pristine. They had to do lots of volunteer hours throughout the year, and they had to have a certain amount of body fat. And if they were measured before a show, if they were even half an inch off, and that's what happens a lot of times in the fashion industry, right then and there they lose their contract. And wow. some of them they said that they contract? never. Yes. Yeah, they do wow. not play. They do not. They, with high fashion models, they will measure you. If your waist is bigger than 25 inches and you go to 25 and a half, you lose your contract. If your hips are bigger than 35 and you go to 35 and a half, you lose the contract. You can be no bigger than 32 or 34 at the top. So this is why I really like the idea of when models can do fashion shows because they could be a little more human, you know. If you, <laughs> you won't you won't lose a contract if you you know eat a Twinkie the day before. But those big, Victoria's Secret models they really had challenging lives. They put them on high protein diets. They had to do rigorous workouts and they had to do salads and it, it was hard. A few of them said that they never felt full. And so when they got a chance to really live after, you know, their contract ended and if they no longer wanted to renew it, that's why you see a lot of them where they have gained weight because they were like, it is time to live. But they <laughs> had to be very, very conscious of everything dealing with their bodies. They said it was extremely hard. Wow. Extremely so hard. Well, that's, that's amazing. So um, I'm not sure if, I, well, I think you did know about this about me. So I, at one time I was a model. Uh, this was back in high school and in college. But <clears throat> I fell into it, uh, sort of. But I even then I understood there was a certain work ethic with it because even when we were modeling, if we had like a one-liner or if we had to do commercials and things like that, you know, I had to go into uh, – um, uh, not not bookings, but uh, auditions. And there are hundreds of other people, or maybe not even if it's hundreds, let's say if it's 20 people, I have to be the better person. So my yeah. reading skills have to be on point. Yeah. I have to have certain character. So breaking into the industry, getting started, I'm coming to your, or one of these young people in the audience is listening, what do you think they need to do if they're really serious, they feel in their heart, that I'm meant to be a model or actor or, or someone feels like I just want to do commercials, or I want to do voiceovers, what do you think they need to do? What would you say three things are that they need to do to get started and how serious okay. they need to be and work? First thing they need to do, they have to have a portfolio, even if it's just with one photographer, but it has to have at least three different looks for that portfolio some should be indoor, some should be outdoor. One so wait, not, not, not from phone pictures, all right? Could they use phone pictures or would you say, could they use like photo pictures or would you say it, they need it, to get it, a professional? It needs to be professional. It needs to be professional pictures. Believe it or not, because of the iPhone, some models have turned photos over to me that I thought was gorgeous and they were like, oh, I just did that on my iPhone. I was like, you good, because I, I didn't know, but uh so that, so now we're dealing with different type of technology that are in the hands, you know, of teenagers and, and young people. But it needs to look professional, whoever has taken it, because you're going to take those professional photos and you're going to get a comp card. If you're into acting, you're going to get a Z card, Z-E-D. And so and both of those cards are sort of set up a different way. But with the comp card, 
it's it's like a portfolio, but it's put into one card for you, where it's like your ID that you're giving, like your business card that you're giving to someone, where they're not gonna have to guess how tall are you, you know, what what is what are your 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 three main measurements, your chest, your waist, and your your hips. Um, size. Sometimes for guys, it's a little different where they want the inseam and the length of the, the pants. And it's going to have your basic information on it, whether it's going to be your agency information or whether it's going to be your personal information if you're a freelance model. So they'll be able to have this card. And instead of, you know, because if you're showing them the portfolio the way it used to be back in the day, it was actually a tangible portfolio photo album. And, of course, you weren't going to leave that there. Now there are things that are online. But having that comp card, composite card, is your your business card and your ticket to letting them know, hey, this is who I am. And it shows professionalism right away when you have a comp card because so many models come to us and they say they're interested in modeling and I'm asking them about photos or comp cards Oh, well, I don't know anything about it. It lets me know that they haven't done the research that lets me know, okay, how serious are you if you haven't done the research to figure out which, what it is that you need first. Um, right now, also, for those models who are into fashion shows and runway, they do need to, this is something new, uh, a lot of the uh, shows are asking for it, um, evidence that they can walk or they want to be able to see you walk. And that could be mm -hmm. just a, a quick little video that they could submit through email, that they could submit through text. Some are even submitting it on TikToks as long as it's clear and straight to the point. We could see it without all the flies and butterflies and lights and all of that stuff, just a plain video so that the person can see their look. It is okay. okay. Yeah, it is okay if you're a model that's only interested in print and not runway, or runway and not print. But it does go hand in hand if you can do both. So mainly oh. that portfolio, mainly that comp card, and a good attitude. Okay, a good attitude. So now here's my question. So drugs and smoking is like a big part of uh, a so-called culture nowadays. You see music videos where they're talking about smoking and drinking or they uh, misuse the use of sex. Um, for someone who smokes or drinks, uh, what would be your suggestion? Do you think someone smoking or drinking or who uses even just marijuana, uh, how well does, does the industry take people like that? I will tell you this, and this is why I feel that it's so important to have management. Believe it or not, some agencies in the past and probably some agencies present have actually introduced their models to stuff like that and have ruined the lives of several models. Those are not companies that I would want to call professional, but it is out there. I will tell you what I do as an agent. I do what they call a, a sweep over the social media page. I always ask models for their social media page. It lets me know one or two things. And I always see one or two or three things. You're either going to have a model who is so into what it is that they want to do that their whole page is going to be filled with, uh, with them presenting themselves as a model. You're also going to have some that barely have any pictures. And I'm like, okay, are you just starting? I don't even see evidence that you're passionate about it. And then sometimes you will see pages, and this is where I – I have sometimes block models where you'll see models that actually have evidence of them with their middle fingers up, with them with smoke out of their mouth, um, with them, you know, the, the drinking thing is a little different. It's just it because sometimes you could be at a social event and just giving a toast, and it could be like a, a, a classy event. But if I'm seeing a pattern where there's a lot of that going on. And then I'm also, I not, not only do I check out the models page, <clears throat> I check out their friends page <clears throat> because it gives me an indication of who, who you're hanging with. Um, so wow. honestly, I don't need to see all of that. And guns is just completely out of the question. I've seen a model and her boyfriend 
holding up, whether they were real guns or not. I, I don't, anything dealing with violence, that model was flopped. I don't, but I don't image is a big see, thing. It's a huge thing because we're hiring you because of your image. So if you were That's to go down someone's page and you see some type of drama or you see them causing conflict on their social media pages, smoking, um, that's something that will definitely ruin someone's career before even starting their career. Yes, and what I do, sometimes I can sort of feel the energies of the person. Sometimes people are just followers. They're doing things because they're thinking that that is the cool thing to do or that's the it thing to do. And sometimes I will feel impelled to contact them and say, hey, this is not really a good image for you. Um, because we could look at somebody and frown upon them all day, but if we don't tell them anything different, sometimes they don't know. Now, if you yeah. tell them, if you tell them and they continue to do what it is, then, then that's just where their mindset is. That, that's, that's what they want to do. But I have had um, several occurrences where I've had to talk to the models and then let them know how I saw their image, and there have been several that have said, you know what, nobody ever told me anything different, not even my parents. And then a lot of times some of them re really didn't have the ideal uh, home situation, so they were just, you know, growing up with friends or growing up with who was around them. And Yes, and so when I tell them about it, they say, thank you, Ms. Rowe, because nobody else ever took the time and cared enough to tell me what you just told me. And several of them will go wow. and clean, clean their pages, and their life path have changed after that. It's only been wow. a handful that really were like, well, this is who I am, and I'm not going to change it. It, it. it hasn't been that many. Maybe two or three that continue, you know. But the rest of everybody that I've talked to, they changed their whole page. And they just okay. they and they you know they they basically thanked me for for letting them know about the image. Wow! So as your students hear that image is a very important thing. Uh, yes. Drugs. That's, but if you're really planning on making it in the top industry, like to the top, you're gonna have to avoid drugs. Um, yes. If you wild out on your pages, um, you know. Uh, overly sexual on your pages. This is something that the main mainstream industry doesn't want to see. Uh, mainstream there, there are different industries. If you want to go to that negative side of the industry, that's a different okay. industry. But okay. where the majority of the money is, if you really want to make it to the top, you will have to have a clean image. And so, um, before we we're kind of uh, close on our time. But uh, just to give everyone a heads up, uh, Miss uh, Roy, Ms. Roy, uh her models call her, uh, mm -hmm. she's offering an opportunity there. They did their the largest fashion show she was in the Guinness World Book of Records. They're doing another show in Houston, that's right. And we want to do it in Houston. We haven't planned any of the details as of yet. Um, we are thinking about breaking another record, but even if we – don't go after another record. We do want to do a really nice show in Houston. We are always about giving back, and so that show that we did, we didn't apply for that record, but I'm quite sure we also had the most cancer survivors in the show because half of those models, including kids, were cancer survivors. Wow. So um, how big was that venue? Like, Ooh, I know I know the runway alone was 500 feet. That's how far, you know, we had to walk <laughs> on, the, on the runway. Now, the rest of the team, they did go ahead and talk about the square footage or whatever. My mind was so focused on getting the models there, but it was at like a huge warehouse, which is called the Sugar Mill, downtown in New Orleans. So it was, it was, it was huge. And the record we had to beat was 421. And it was crazy because we had over 500, close to 600 models that actually um, registered. But because life happens with people, some people got sick, some people's grandparents died, you know, just different things happened. 
we were able to get 430, so we beat the record by nine. And I understand now, because I, I kept saying, oh, we're definitely going to have all that we need. But I didn't even realize, because to me, 430 is a small number. But when you're dealing with that many people, that Moving was parts. a lot of work. We worked for an entire year. So, but it's a benefit. That's what we really love the most. And the thing we loved about it also is that some of those people, I'm being realistic, a lot of those people, I don't want to say a lot, but a couple of those people in that show, when it's time to do another show next year, those people will not make it. I mean, we're we're looking at the numbers because we've been doing shows with this company for the last six years. And so far, 36 of the women, including my own sister, have passed. And we're never able to hit it to the next runway. So it was a blessing to be able to allow those women and the kids and men, you know, fathers, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, were all a part of the show. That's awesome. Um, um, for those of you who are interested, she is a very open book. Uh, she's willing to help anybody, her, she and her agency. And so um, we'll have some of her information for you. But thank you so much for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule. Like, she's actually about to go to the ne next meeting right now. To the next meeting, yes. Yeah, yes, so, that's uh, why they're calling me. Oh, okay, yeah. so thank you so much for your time. I knew this was oh, a, a big course. sacrifice for you. And I love you so much, sis. And, I love you too, yes. And um, all right, thank you so much. And students, if you have any questions, I'll be here in the audience to help you out.